Hey guys, this is Josh, Gabby, and we're working with Misty, the Doberman, puppy. I, I, I think she's a little over a year. And we're teaching her send to place. And the way that we're doing this is Gabby is working with the e-collar and leash guidance. So just like the recall that we, that we covered earlier, it, um, we're going to be turning the e-collar on at a level that she doesn't feel and dialing up to a level that she feels she's tuned in with and teaching her what to do with that. And today, what we're teaching her what to do with it is to go on to the place bed. This is called send to place. So we start by uh, turning on the e-collar pressure, saying place, guiding her on the bed. Would you like to show us one of those? Sure. Missy, break. So as if it was her first time here. Place. Good girl. Well, place. Good girl. Yes, you are. Break. Good girl. Good. Place. Good. Very nice. And then what we're going to do is e-collar pressure on first at a, at a level that she doesn't feel, which will start at a six. Gabby's going to turn that on, dial up. As soon as Misty looks as though she sees, she feels that sensation, she says the word place. She guides her on the bed with the e-collar pressure still on, uh, but the, the, the pressure turns off as soon as all four feet are on the bed, and then she praises. Place. Good girl. Just like that. Such a good girl. And you do that over and over again until eventually the dog's actually gonna go to the bed without you having to walk them. Now, after you've done that a bunch, Missy's gonna learn to turn the, when she hears the word place, in order to turn the pressure off, she's gotta to go to the bed. So now we don't have to uh, guide the dog to the bed with a leash, now it's off leash, and she's just relying on the e-collar pressure to know where she has to be. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Place. Good girl. No. Good. Nice. Good girl, you're so smart. Nice. Now remember, we're using low level e-collar pressure. This isn't punishment, this isn't consequences, this is teaching on a level. If you put this tool on your own hand and you dial up, I bet you don't even start to feel it to a level 10. And it's not gonna be consequential to you, I bet, until it's about closer to 30. So uh, she dialed up from a six to an 11 and she felt the sensation, she got on the bed, she's learning what to do with the sensation. This holds up later on, as we up the distractions, those numbers won't be relevant anymore. We'll have to go to higher numbers so she can learn what to do with a little bit of a higher number when she's distracted, such as when guests come in the door or, or, or food's on the floor, or whatever, whatever it is, she's gonna be trained to when she feels the sensation, if asked to go to the place bed, she knows exactly what to do with it. Okay, good girl. Break. Break, good girl. By using the dial-up method, Gabby's able to start at a level that, that the dog barely feels or doesn't feel and dial up to the, that Goldilocks number where the dog feels it and is interested in lear learning how to turn it off, okay? So as we add distractions, now that she's had some uh, experience with, with no distractions, as I add distractions, she's, the dog's usually focused on the distraction and the, the number has to go up slightly higher. And this is a nice way that we like to teach dogs how to get, uh, how we like to teach them about the consequences of of non-compliance through distractions, okay? So if a dog gets distracted, the number keeps going up and then it finally gets to this point where it's not overwhelming to them, but it breaks through the stimulation of, of the environment and they say, that's right, I know how to turn this off and they go to the place bed. So we start with no distractions, low levels, and we start with mild distractions. This allows us to get to mild levels. And then we, then we go to high distractions, which usually allows us to get to high levels. And it's a fair way to teach the dog in all these situations. So then when life hits, if you need it, it's there for you and your dog knows what to do with, with the levels in all sorts of different situations. So it starts like this, mild distraction. We have the cat <laughs> and we have a ball. We're gonna get her distracted on these things. And then we're just going to ask her, to go to place, and we're gonna do the dial-up method, and whatever number we land on, we land on. Just remember, watch the dog. Place. Okay, good. good. So, so what'd you get to for a number? 16. 16 there, that's 16. So we got a little higher. We were at 11 with, with no distraction, we were at a 16. But notice that the dog didn't really react any different. 
because as the dog becomes aroused and stimulated, the numbers have to go higher anyway just to break the noise of the environment. So as we add distractions, the numbers go higher and we teach the, the dogs what to do with these higher numbers by, by guiding them with the leash. When it's all said and done, all we have to do to get compliance for this command is ask for it and if, they, if they're non-compliant, we can click at a mild level correction and go up if we need to, it, meaning if the dog's saying they're being stubborn, they're going in the opposite direction, they don't feel like complying, you can always go up and the dog understands what to do with any of these levels in any situation. Good girl. <laughs> I opened the door. I opened the door up to provide a distraction and it works. Misty really wants to come over to the door. So we can um, now use this distraction with our command to teach her what to do if the numbers go a little higher if she's distracted. Place. Good. Nice. Fifteen. Nice. And then try it from this side. Yeah. Okay. The door. Break. Good girl, and then what we'll do is we'll give her a little sniff of fresh air. Right? Ooh. And now she's distracted by the door. And then you can just try it straight from there. Send her to place. Place. She guessing with a sit. There she goes. Good girl. She's getting a pretty good understanding of this, right? Mm -hmm. So the practicality of the place bed is that if you don't have, if you can't trust your dog to make decisions and you're in a pinch and you have your guests coming over and you need to give them a breath, you can send them to place and your dog will wait here until, the, until further instruction. Going down. Very practical. Okay. So now we're going down in numbers because she's getting so tuned into that e-collar, she's gonna be paying attention to Break. low levels, even with high distractions, and that's the beauty of it. Place. Good girl. Nice, good girl. nice. Water. Smart young lady. I think she's. I think she's well on her way to finishing up this session. Yeah. Good job. Girl. Break. Oh, this break. Good. 